As you recall in an earlier training video, each field you have in your table has its own set of properties. And you can view the properties for each field one of a couple of ways. And one way is when you're in the table's data sheet view, as I'm in here now, is to come up here and click on its related contextual fields tab. And it's right there, the properties group for that selected field. Well, any cell within that column, as long as you're in the column that represents the field you want to view the properties thereof or make some changes to. And you've just got a few properties here. If you want all the properties, then you want to go ahead and change this view and go to the design. Right click on the tab, design view, select a field up above, and then down below, you'll see the properties for that selected field. And you can see it's employee ID. So down below, the field size hasn't changed. It's six and and you've got additional properties. Now what I want to do in this training video is to show you how you can control the front end user's input so it's a little bit more efficient. You get more accurate data as opposed to them just typing in whatever they want. But let me start off with something simple. For example, let's go back to the data sheet view. You have the EE for employee ID in all uppercase. If you want it all in lowercase and you're like, oh man, now I have to go back and retype all this in lowercase. No. We can fix that. Or if you come down here and you want to start typing in lowercase and have it automatically convert to uppercase, well, let me show you the trick. Hit the escape key a couple of times to get out of that record being written. And let's go back to the design view. And then down below in the properties for the selected field employee ID. So make sure that's selected. And then come down below, click in the format field. And to have anything in uppercase or lowercase, as far as the text goes, you just need a greater than or less than symbol in that format field. So if I do less than, then everything that's already in that field, that's text wise, will be converted to lowercase. So let me hit the tab key. And after I hit the tab key, you get this little flash, this tag here, lightning bolt. It's the property update options. So if I don't do anything else and I just convert it here, it'll only affect this table. But remember, you have other objects that are based upon this table, like your forms and reports, that if you want to update there as well, then you have to click on this little tag here and say update format everywhere that this employee ID is used, not just the table. So we can get everything in lowercase into our reports and forms. So I'm not going to click on it. So it just keeps it to this table. Not that I have any forms or reports here to update to. So if I did try it, we'll watch what happens. Uh, you got nothing here. You have no other objects that are based upon this table. So, okay, click okie dokie. Let's go ahead and click on the view button. Oh, you're supposed to save your work before you flip. After you make a change here, that's fine. Do it for me. Click yes, save it now, and there you go. All the uppercase E's are now lowercase. Let's go ahead and change that. Right click, go to the design view. And if we just flip this around from less than, hold down the shift key, hit the period to the greater than. And then hit the tab key and upon exit you get that tag to go ahead and update it not just within the table but everywhere this employee id is found in the other objects so i don't have any others there we're good click on the view button be sure to save it yes everything's in uppercase and when i type in a new record and i put it all in lowercase i don't have to use my pinky to hold down the shift key so i can save myself time when it comes to data entering Let's just go ahead and save it right now. Hold down the shift key, hit enter, and it automatically converts it from lowercase to uppercase. Oh, that's so nice. Okay, let's do some more. How about for the hours here? Every time I enter in a new employee, for the most part, they're going to be at 40 hours a week. So I don't want to have to type it in for the most part. Maybe just automatically have it default to 40 hours. And then on the rare occasions that we hire somebody less than 40 hours, then I can just make a simple change. So to set the default for a field, let's go ahead and right click, go to the design view, and well, make sure you've got the field selected you want the default for. We don't want employee ID, we want hours. And then we want to come down here and change the default value from zero to 40, hit the tab key, and that's it. Now, how about if we do something a bit more than just saying, okay, the default's 40 hours. Let's say that anybody who works for a company cannot earn more than $30 an hour. Because if they do, then, well, that's just too much. In any case, to go ahead and set that value for their pay rate. So this is for their hours. We'll see that in just a minute, the default value. Let's come up here and select pay rate, and then come down below and say that 
instead of the default value, the validation rule. We're going to write in an expression that says you cannot put anything more than $30 here. So you can do less than, so it can be less than, then type in 30. But what if you want it to be exactly 30 or less? Well, then we need to go back and type in the equals after the less than symbol. Remember, for the operator less than or greater than, if you want it to be equal to, you have to type in the equals always after it, not before it. So this expression that we wrote says, the rule says, for this field, you can't type in anything that's over 30. It can equal 30 or be less than 30, so less than or equal to 30. And then if I just type that in there and somebody try to type in more, it would just give them an error. Well, for example, let's go ahead and click on the View button. We must save it. Now, this is interesting because what's happening here is that the data integrity rules have been changed. What that means is it says that for the validation rule, everything has to be $30 or less. Well, I have a few employees that are over $30. I think there's at least one. And so do you want the existing data to be tested with the new rules? No, we'll grandfather them in. So if they earn more than $30 an hour, well, we'll leave them as such. So we'll say no. Well, there you go. This guy right here, the first employee, $75 an hour. Well, that's horrifying. And then look at this guy, over 30 and that guy 55 so we won't have that test those we'll leave those alone but for any new ones that we type in when we go down below or you can go ahead and click on new record automatically takes us down below that we can't type in something that's over thirty dollars an hour and there you go we've got our default value remember for the hours it's already there forty hours so if i type in ee one dash sixty five hit the tab key puts it in uppercase there's forty don't have to type it in then go over the pay rate, and let's type in something more than 30, like 31, and then hold the shift key down, hit enter to save it, and it says one or more values are prohibited by the validation rule. It's got to be less than or equal to 30, and then enter a value that the expression can accept. Well, in any case, you can have a message that's a lot cleaner than that. So let's go ahead and click OK, hit the escape key a couple of times to get rid of that, and let's go ahead and go back to the design view. And for our rule, we can actually have validation text that says if somebody doesn't meet what we set here by typing in over 30, we can have our own prompt message that's just nice and clean and uplifting saying, please don't do this again. Or how about this? Let's go ahead and type in, must enter a value under 30. Or if you've got a lot more to type in and you get to the end, you can right click and zoom in on it. And you've got a lot more space there, right? Okay, click cancel. So now we can go ahead and test that. Come up here, click on the View button. We've got to save it. Let's scroll down and we type in EE1-66. Hit the Tab key and let's type in 31. Hold down the Shift key, hit Enter. Okay, isn't that cleaner? Must enter a value under 30. I like it. Let's click OK. And so if I do 30, hold down the Shift key, hit Enter. It accepts it. Let's go ahead and right click, go back to the design view. Now this next field property is only found in those fields that have the data type set to text. It doesn't matter if it's long or short, as long as it's text. Go ahead and select that field and then down below in its corresponding field properties, the one that's proprietary to that is the allow zero length and it's set to yes. Now some database designers will use this, but you could be creative and probably get by without it. In any case, the definition of it is, is that it'll allow a string that contains no characters. Well, how does that work? If you type in a pair of quotes with no space in between it, that's a string that contains no characters. I think a good example of why you might want to use this is, some database designers use this to indicate that the data enterer knows of no value that exists for that field. Instead of them just skipping over the field, they'll just type in open and close quotes with no space, because if they skip over it, it'll enter in a null or empty value. At least this way, when we set it to yes, as it's already set, you can see it there, it'll allow the double quotes with no space in between them or zero length string to be added to this field. Now, when you're in the data sheet view, the data enterer, and they enter in open close quotes with no space, you won't be able to see it, but it'll be there. So that way, when you're doing queries and you want to enter in some criteria, that find me all the fields that have a zero length string. You type it in, it pulls it up, as opposed to all those fields that they just skipped over and didn't enter in a thing at all. 
So for this example, the department, maybe we just type in zero length string, indicating that the employee doesn't belong to a department. That way we did check, as opposed to leaving it blank, and then some other data enter coming in here and going, hmm, we still need to find out. Like I said, you can use this or you can be creative and just say, look, type in the text, no department, and that works. Now, aside from setting the validation rules in the design view, like for a pay rate, down below, it's got to be less than or equal to 30. You can also do it in the data sheet view. Let's just come up here, right click on the tab, go to the data sheet view, and just come up here to the related contextual fields tab, and come over here to the field validation group. And it's for the pay rate, right? So let me go ahead and click in any record in that column for that field and come up here and click on the validation drop down arrow. And there you go. You're looking at these two up above. You can see that they're highlighted. That means that there's a validation rule being applied as well as a message. So if you want to take a look at it, go ahead and click on it. It's right there. You can go ahead and make a change to it if you want. Let me click cancel, click on the drop down arrow. And there's the message. You can change that. Let me click cancel. Let's go back to the design view. And let me show you. Let's go ahead and delete it here. And we'll save it. Go back to the data sheet view. And let's go ahead and go to pay rate, fields, validation. There's nothing there, right? So it disappeared. So what you do in the design view will display it here. And we can also do it here. Field validation rule has to be less than or equal or equal to 30. Go ahead and click okie dokie. Okay, it says existing data violates new settings for the validation rule. Well, is that less than 30? No, so it's in violation. Do you want to keep the testing with the new settings? To keep the new setting and continue testing, click yes. To revert to the old setting and continue testing, click no. To stop testing, click cancel. Well, we can go ahead and say yes and just move through that but it doesn't change what the current value is even though it's violating the rule. So let's come back up here, click on the validation. It's in play. So you can click on it and see, oh, there we go. But how about some text? So you can click on the drop down arrow, field validation message, and say hey, or you know whatever text when they type in something more than 30 that wasn't previously there. Whatever message it says, hey, don't do this. It's gotta be less than 30. You get the point, right? I mean, you can do it here in the data sheet view or in the design. So same thing, click okie dokie. When I come down here and I do EE1-75, hit the tab key, let's type in 32, hold down the shift key and hit enter to save it. And it says, hey, so you get your message there as well. Click okie dokie. And then to get out of this, hit the escape key once, hit it twice, and it didn't save it. Well, I could have saved it if I had it less than 30 but we'll leave it as is. And then something else up here, click on the validation drop-down rule, you have another set. Well, what's the difference between the two? Well, these two are for the fields. See where it says field, field, and this one's for the record, pun intended. And here's the example. You can go ahead and write an expression for the entire record that pits one field against another, as opposed to just focusing on one field. So you can say, okay, for the entire record, the start date can't be greater than the end date. It has to be earlier than the end date because if the start date is older than the end date, comes after the end date, okay, well, that's a problem. Another good example is like if you had the order date less than or equal to the ship date because you can, you know, have the order the same day that you want to ship it, right? You just can't ship something that you haven't received an order yet. So the order date has to come earlier or on the same day that you plan to ship it. And so, well, it's for the record here, the validation rules. Let's go ahead and right click, go back to the design view. And you can see down below, we don't have anything for the record. We just have for the pay rate field, the validation rule that we can set up just for that field. So as far as setting up for the record, we can go ahead and do that in the data sheet view on its related contextual field tab over in, well, right click, data sheet. Field validation. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.